I'm a financial advisor. I have my own company called Mueller and Associates, very clever. <laughs> <laughs> and my um, licenses are through New York Life or the securities arm of New York Life, which is called Nightlife Securities and Eagle Strategies. For me, this is where the Pacific Institute actually came in because my company is excellent at training people about dividend scales and about mutual funds and about exchange, you know, writers and you know all the things. I'm actually a financial advisor, and they're great at training you and all of that. You go through training all the time. What what I felt the company was not good at was teaching me how to deal with the stuff that keeps me from doing the things that would be successful. And that's where the Pacific Institute came in for me. Well, what to say about New York Life, it's probably, well, it is the premier financial organization in the nation. Um, it is the strongest company in the nation financially. They run the company right for the right reasons. Nobody got off on credit default swaps. Um, I mean, the company has its head screwed on straight. They know what they're about. They know what their mission is. They do it. They do it with the client in mind and the people who work for them. I often tell my, my clients that it's almost like a company from the 1950s. They try to do the right thing. Probably in like 1987 or so, um, my then husband worked at Cairo TV and um, he said the management is going to be going to this workshop. They've invited spouses. And this guy by the name of Lou Tice talked. And um, it was like, um, it was like walking into a new room that had been attached to my house and I never knew was there. And it was, um, I mean, it was revolutionary for my brain. Um, and really, it was just, like I said, it was like my mind opening up. Just, I don't even know how to explain it. It's almost like uh, it was a language that was already there for me and I didn't know I spoke it, but when people spoke to me, I understood it. It was, it was fabulous. And I set a goal then to get more information. So I went down to the Pacific Institute and they said, oh, we've got these audio cassette programs and we've got these videos that you can buy. And by the way, you could go to a Lou Live type thing where he would actually talk to you for a longer period of time, like two and a half days. I, I mean, to this day, I don't drive down the freeway without listening to the tapes. And like I said, I can probably mouth the tapes, but every single time I get something new out of it. I've used this information at, from the Pacific Institute in all areas of my life. Um, last year, I decided I would try to be the number one person at the company, which I managed to succeed. But in the middle of that run, which was a year-long run, um, I also set some other goals. I set a goal to find somebody worthy of loving, and I found him. And I set a goal to buy some property uh, in, at the time I thought it was the Sam Wands, and I did that. So um, I use it in all areas of my life, and I find that it's not a choice of working in one area or the other. That's what's great about the information is that you get to set goals in lots of areas of your life. I mean, that's what this information has taught me, is that you don't have to bite down on things, right? You don't have to knuckle under and do it and work 40, you know, 50, 80, 100, 110 hours a week. I mean, I worked 9 to 5 when I did this, but... Um, I, I set the goal and I let my reticular activating system open up and find the people to talk to and, and you have rapid growth and expansions in all areas of your life. It's almost like you've got a magic box. I, I think I'm a resilient person, but I do a lot of affirmations about resiliency because in my business there is a lot of need for resiliency. I mean, people can treat you very poorly, um, so you just, you know, you need to develop a lot of resiliency because what I find is that if I get knocked down by a bad piece of information, the question is, is how long am I going to stay down? You know, in my past life, I probably would have stayed down a month, two, three, maybe a year, maybe two years until something changed. Now, because of the affirmations I do, I get knocked down. And what I told somebody is I'm like that punching Bozo the Clown. I don't know if you know what that's like. Right, so there was this Bozo the Clown and he had sand on the bottom and you punch him and he go but he go and you'd hit him and he go but he'd pop back up again. That's who I am, that's what I visualize all the time. So the minute I get knocked down, I just pop back up again. Habits are obviously important, developing good habits. Beliefs, I think, are at the core of everything. Um, it's always, for me, challenging my beliefs. What do I think is true? Because it probably isn't, it's just me constraining my belief. You know, I just started doing better and better at the company and setting higher and higher goals. Um, I started saying, well, if I could double my income last year, then 
let's double it this year. Let's play that game. If I doubled it this year, then how about doubling it next year? And so I doubled my income, and those start to be pretty big numbers. You know, I mean, they start small, but they start to be big when you double them. And I did that for a number of years. And you know, after a while, you start thinking, wow, I could pretty much do anything I want if I set my mind on it and I challenge my own beliefs. Um, and then the next thing, so you're in the top 50 people of the company for 10, 12 years, and you start thinking, you know, those people on stage who are number one, which when I first started were like, whoa. I mean, they're, they're just people like me. So I think there's a bigger platform for me talking about kind of this information and empowering people, but women in particular, um, to know that they can live a very intentional life. Here I go again. But people can actually get anything they want, truly, if they just start using this information. And it piles upon itself. At the beginning, you know, you're skeptical inside yourself. And then pretty soon, you know, like I said, I had a couple of situations where I set a goal and I got it right away. And you start thinking, maybe I could set bigger ones and then bigger ones. And then why not be this and why not be that? And for me, it's trying to figure out not just to achieve a goal for achieving it, but what is driving me, what, hmm, what things are within me that need to be fed, okay? That, um, and they, they change from year to year. But if you feel like you're capable of more, right? But somehow or another, that's the way I felt. I thought, I was capable of a lot, but why am I living this life that makes me feel I'm a little more measly. In fact, it was sort of the longer I was doing it and the more I was not doing well, the worse I was feeling about myself inside. I think on a day-to-day -day basis, I might not have been able to measure that. But when I look at it, I was kind of on a downhill slope of my assessment of my own abilities to create things and make things happen. So when I got on that uphill slope, which was the Pacific Institute for me, um, you know, I just had little victory after little victory, little victory, and then I started thinking, oh, this stuff works, and this works, and it works bigger, and you start getting more and more intensely into it. I guess what I've learned through the reticular activating system is that the answers are all there. The clients are all there. It's just me opening up to them. It's not a magic thing of me having you introduce me to a very, very wealthy pe person. All the people are out there. All the solutions I need are out there. I just need to open up my brain to see them. I have to set the goal first. And then when the goal is set, I open up and I see all the solutions. They are already there. It's like magic. It's like Lou said, the keys in your pocket the whole time. You know, you're stuck in jail and you could be stuck there your entire life. I think most people live unfulfilled lives. What is that phrase? A life of quiet desperation. So many people do. And then to discover after all of that that the key's in your own pocket and all you have to do is take it out of your pocket, put it in the lock, open it up, and the whole world's out there for you. That's what the Pacific Institute has done for me.